Well, hello, I'm uh, Daryl Black and welcome to episode number 23 of the Connected Leadership Podcast. Today, in this episode, we are going to talk about something that's really, really important to leadership and that is a discussion around mission. If you're a leader and you don't really know why you or your team are, are functioning or, or what role you're playing in a process or an organization, that's a big, big problem. So we're going to talk about what your mission is, why it's critical to you and your team to know what that mission is, and most importantly, how you as a leader can make sure you keep it top of mind in your day-to-day -day operations. So I'm Daryl Black. I'm taking my 30 years of experience and uh, in, in emergency management and emergency response and helping you apply those lessons to your personal and professional lives. So first and foremost, some announcements. Uh, it's been pretty busy. And um, so I've got, as usual, a bunch of things going on here uh, for tech and, and whatnot. But... Um, so I'm really, really excited to announce a, uh, I'm creating an online challenge, a seven day online challenge, which, which will be free. And it's going to be something around the lines of seven days to being a better leader or something like that. Within that, we'll talk about some specific strategies and tactics, actual tactics that you can take away each day around leadership specifically things like uh, stress management um, uh, some concepts to or a concept or tactics to create expectations properly to get buy-in from your team to build influence and, and build uh, respect influence specifically so the idea there is that you'll sign up to the challenge you'll get put into a Facebook group and then that's where I'll be conducting the um, the live training over the period of, uh, of seven days and then you'll report back and we'll discuss, uh, uh, you know, how you did and any questions you may have. And again, that's it's, uh, seven days. It's specific for, um, it, it's specific and tactical so that it's not a long drawn out, you know, training program or something like that. It's meant to give you a real kickstart to your leadership journey. Uh, that's coming uh, next month sometime. So stay tuned for that. I was also in a place called Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, Canada, and um, I just keep looking down here just to make sure that we're streaming okay. And I was uh, speaking about the what I called the responder mindset to a bunch of uh, search and rescue volunteers and, and paid professionals for that matter uh, from all over the country and some from the United States. And my whole premise, given my background of almost 30 years in search and rescue, was about the responder mindset. What does it take from a mindset perspective to respond and do the things that we often have to do in search and rescue, whether it be, you know, the really, really good stuff, going to find lost and missing people and, and finding them alive, and also the, the not so good part. So I talked about some, some experiences in a Pine Lake tornado, which hit in 2000, which was a very prominent uh, event at that time. I talked about my experiences during Hurricanes Katrina and Rita in 2005 in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. And I did talk a little bit on in my experiences in the floods. For those of you from Alberta, you know that 2013 in southern Alberta in particular was devastating in terms of floods. And then 2016, a huge wildfire in northern Alberta, and most recently another fire in northern Alberta. So I talked a lot about what what is the, the boots on the ground kind of perspective from a leadership mentality and a responder mentality. And that was uh, That was an awful lot of fun. I, I really, really enjoyed that. It is from that conference that this episode was actually uh, kind of the idea. And the idea came from a teammate of mine in, in the search and rescue emergency response environment. And, you know, I, I posed the question to some of my teammates and I said, hey, you know, like, what, what are some pain points? What are some challenges that you're having that maybe I could talk about on this podcast? It was really interesting because... Um, one of the gentlemen said that, uh, you know, he has a real tough time with regard to mission. 
I'm like, hmm, what, what do you mean? And we're going to talk about that, but specifically it got me thinking, we, we went into a conversation around how many times as a leader do we really not know really what our mission is and what the mission of the team is. So that's what we're going to be talking about on this podcast episode. Now, a quick review before we dive into the whole mission component. Um... Leadership as we define it is social influence, which man maximizes the eff uh, efforts of others to achieve a goal. So social influence, which maximizes the efforts of others to achieve a goal. Last episode, we spoke about snakes and ladders and how that pertains to leadership, where the start of the board game snakes and ladders were all there. Ultimately, we're trying to get up multiple levels to what I define leadership and, and kind of the pinnacle being connected leadership. And what is connected leadership and the connected leader specifically? It's a leader that's self-aware. They facilitate. They don't dictate. They lead through respect and not fear. They lead with inspiration and not exasperation. A leader that is vulnerable empathetic, compassionate, and calm, and expects the same around them. That's what connected leadership is, and that's what a connected leader does. So that is the end result. Now, the board game is all about rolling dice, and if you get a ladder, then you're able to jump up a couple of levels, or one level, or three levels, depending on the size of the ladder. Uh, but on the flip side of that is the snakes, and the snakes are the ones that will if you land on that square, you're going to snake down one level, two levels, three levels, whatever the, the length of, of that particular snake is. So when we talk about the leadership behaviors that drive us towards connected leadership, it's important for us to notice that there are behaviors that enable people. It builds trust. It builds cohesion for example. And those kinds of behaviors are respect behaviors. So if I show respect to others, then my leadership influence will actually grow and I'll become more closer to the connected leadership um, uh, end goal. And that would be, if I exhibit that, that would be a ladder. Now, if I demonstrate some maybe toxic behaviors, maybe micromanagement, for example, or I lead with a culture of fear, that will be a snake behavior and that will take us further away from our end goal. So that is essentially what we talk about with regard to snakes and ladders. So if you're interested in that, uh, check out the episode, uh, episode number 22. All right. So now for us to talk about the mission and now we will not be talking tonight about the mission statement or anything like that. We are going to be talking about the mission of the team that you are immediately influencing so the and supporting. I look at emergency services and search and rescue through this lens, and that is one of the most important things that gives teams cohesion and trust and effectiveness, and that is mission. But specifically, the mission is well known to everybody and we are all in it together and we're moving in the same direction. So as a result, we are stronger. We are, as I said, more cohesive. Ego kind of falls by the wayside and it is crystal clear why we're doing particular things. And so if everyone knows the mission and if the mission is constantly being reinforced, which we'll talk about, then the team drives hard and fast and can get an awful lot of things done with minimal drama. And they're empowered. They feel empowered. They'll, they're healthier. All of those things. And I would submit to you that that's probably a better model, having everyone moving in the same direction, than say like a pinball machine, maybe with multiple pinballs going off where it's like bouncing around and all sorts of noise and chaotic and things like that. So from a leader, leadership perspective, I would much rather be in the back of the canoe and have two or three paddlers in perfect unison, all of us going in the same direction, nice and smooth, rather than paying attention to that, rather than the whole pinball machine with that 
with the, the ball bouncing around and, and all of that stuff. So think about the importance of having a good mission and having everyone kind of buy into that particular mission. That is why the teams I belong to are so effective because the ego gets set aside because the mission our why we're here is first and foremost in everybody's mind. Now, as a leader, it's your job, though, to make sure that the mission is defined. So maybe you're going to have to deal with your, your management. And once it's defined, making sure that it's reinforced. And we'll talk about some strategies around that here shortly. So apart from the fact that, you know, we're in this canoe and we're, we're all traveling together and we're all in unison. Yeah, it sounds great and, and harmonious and blah, 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 blah. But really where the rubber meets the road, why does it matter? Well, if you have a mission, a clear mission or, or, or purpose, then it gives guidance in the absence of clear direction. In today's corporate environment, where you're dealing with finances and humans and, and policies and procedures, all of this stuff, sometimes the answers aren't black and white. They're not cut and dry. So if you can define your purpose and if you are confronted with maybe some tough decisions where there isn't a policy in place, or maybe there is, but there's another policy in place that may kind of interact with that one, then you can make a better decision more quickly, more effectively, more efficiently if you know what your mission is. So that's a big part of it is it gives guidance in the absence of clear direction. Kind of similarly, it gives priorities. If you're like me and like most other people that have worked in a corporate environment, everything is a priority it seems like. Everything's at four o'clock, p.m. on a Friday and it has to get done before the end of the day. Uh, everything's urgent. Everything's important. Everything is time sensitive. Nah, 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 nah. And so the if you want to burn your folks out, make sure that everything's a high priority. All right. So that's a little pro tip for you. If you want to burn people out, make sure that everything's a priority and really push them hard. So if you have a clear mission, then you know that the the you know why you're here you know why you're here so you can take priorities and and i get it i get it there is literally and legitimately priority items that come down the pipe each and every day multiple of them but if you have a clear mission then you'll be able to get a little bit more clarification around which is the highest priority out of say two or three or whatever the case is. So the mission will allow you to, to juggle those priorities and, and prioritize the priorities, if that makes any sense. And it reduces friction amongst the team and, and friction both psychologically and personally, but also friction that's inherent in pieces that are moving. You know, and, and I talked just a few minutes ago about the canoe. If you can picture yourself in the back of a canoe and you've got multiple people rowing, and they're in perfect unison. That is where you're trying to get to, where there's a great rhythm going on. Everyone's contributing. There's uh, not a lot of conflict. And where you're moving in the same direction, that's what you're trying to do. So if you have a clear mission, then that's what you'll be able to do, is you'll be able to get everybody into that canoe and paddling in unison and uh, and moving forward versus if you don't let's say that now you've got those three or four canoeists and um, none of them are coordinated in terms of their they're putting the paddles in the water one wants to go in this direction one wants to go in that direction one wants to go in this direction and you want to go in yet another direction how is that going to work out for you probably not really really well and as a result whole lot of splashing zero movement and that is a big problem so keep that in mind. And if you have a mission and, and it's constantly being defined and, and refined, then it causes a lot of less, lot less frustration for people. People don't like unpredictability. We are creatures of comfort. Even in chaotic environments, we do like a little bit of stability. And in some environments, like some corporate environments, we like a lot of stability and predictability. So if 
everyone if if you have a good mission that's well defined then the roles and responsibilities of people will be um will be more defined as well they'll know where they fit into the grand scheme of things so there'll be a lot less frustration and a lot less unknowns and where there's unknowns human nature is just to really think the worst the worst case scenario so a big part of leadership particularly around mission is defining where are we trying to get to so we're all on the same page and we all know it there's no hidden agendas here let's get that mission out there and let's talk about it and let's continue to reinforce it now there will be some resistance for sure where particularly with your bosses and where it's going to where there will be some resistance is maybe sometimes you as a leader will have to push back a little bit with regard to the mission or what your team is actually there to do now you're going to say to yourself well hold on i ultimately work for my boss they sign my paycheck i totally get it i totally get it but here's a news flash for you leaders your job is to create a barrier or be a barrier or buffer between management or you know the multiple levels of an organization and your team you need to be like a force field if if that's a better analogy and sometimes that means you need to take a hit for the team you need to push back a little bit towards your boss and say hey you know what oh i don't think this is ours i don't I don't know whose it is, but I don't think it's ours. At least push that back a little bit because you need to ensure that your team has a mission. And if you become the dumping ground for all the stuff, then your mission starts to starts to wane or it starts to dilute or, or erode or disappear. And then that's going to lead to the canoeists all paddling in different directions. Those pinballs going off and chaotic fashion all sorts of noises so yeah you will have to step up and you will have to be a leader maybe that's at the expense of your own comfort but it doesn't have to be confrontational because maybe you just need to lead upwards and say hey look i get it i get that that might come to us or you think that that is but really this is a little bit more of our skill set. This is a little bit more about what our mission is here. And I don't see a lot of alignment with regard to that task or that deliverable coming into us. So it doesn't have to be negative. Maybe it's just leading upwards and saying perhaps it should go to a different area or a different team or something like that. Now, how once you get the clearly defined mission, how do you reinforce or, or how do you make it day to day? How do you operationalize it? Herein lies the true challenge. Yes, you've got a mission. We all have a job description, but we oftentimes that goes out the window right away. So we need to constantly as leaders refer to what that mission is. Why are we here? So in as many opportunities as you possibly can, continue to talk about the mission. Talk about what the purpose of the team is and where it fits into the grand scheme of things in the organization and the process. And the reason you're doing that is to consistently make it top of mind for people so that they are empowered to make decisions that go move you towards the mission or make decisions that maybe um, don't align with the mission, but that's okay. Then those can get pushed off to, to something else or maybe kicked up to in, in your direction. So it pushes them or pushes it down to them so that even again, day to day, minute by minute, they can make the decisions around priorities that fit the mission. They can make decisions around make, getting, getting decisions or making decisions when there's no clear policies because the mission comes first and then you work backwards from that. Now, keep it in mind that you may receive pushback as well because there'll be a lot of fear on the team. The same, well, man, oh man, if we, won't we be like a non-team player? Like, I like to help people. Yes, absolutely. So we're not saying that you be completely obtuse and detach yourself from the organization at all. That's not it at all. But what we are saying is being very diligent and protective of the mission. Because if you keep the mission intact, as I said, it's got 
so many advantages. It reduces that frustration of people. It lowers burnout because you're not being pulled in five trillion different directions. It's far more effective, far more efficient to organize and run a team that has a very clearly defined mission. And that definition, that role definition, that mission definition starts with you, the leader. So if you don't have it, well, that's the first place to start. So the takeaway this week, and this is a pretty short episode, your takeaway this week is, do you even know what your team's mission is? You know, and again, I'm not talking about your organizational mission statement. That's a conversation we'll have at another time. But why is your team even there? Where does it fit in the grand scheme of things? Where does it fit in the process or a process? Start there. And then once you know what it is, Start the process of defining it or, or, or socializing it and operationalizing it with a, the members of your team. I know it sounds so simple, but I'm telling you right now, if your team has a good, clear mission, your team will perform at a higher, higher level. They'll be happier and healthier and your job will be even easier because you don't need to m manage them day to day, minute by minute, because you're all going in the same direction. So keep that in mind. As always, remember to be a connected leader. Remember to subscribe, share, comment, do whatever you need to do to continue spreading this particular message. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. And until next week.